Okay, here we go on LSD Podcast, Episode 3, Lincoln Sharp Discussions. Happy New Year. It is the 2nd of January, 2024. I am here in Bangkok, Thailand. And my guest today, well, he's been a part of my life since I think 2015 when I went down the conspiratorial rabbit hole. Um, like most people, you would have stumbled across my next guest. Mark Sargent is on LSD. Welcome, Mark. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> and thank you very much for having me. And by the way, uh, it's only January 1st here because you are ahead of me. I'm 15 hours ahead of you. Yeah, so uh, 7 p.m. Uh, your time, I think. Um, on no, it's 4, 4 p.m. my time. Oh, 4 p.m., sorry, 7 a.m. my time. See, it's 7 yeah. a.m. my time. Uh, happy That's New right. Year. What did, you, what did you get up to? Did you, uh, did you see in the new year? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, I avoided it like the plague, uh, mostly because I, I'm apprehensive. I mean, one, I, look, I'm just grateful that 23 is done, but 24 coming in, most Americans know that this year is going to be really weird. And uh, we should probably talk about it a bit. But yeah, but anyway, the point is I didn't do anything. Let's I just, I, just wa I watched I watched a, a Korean <laughs> Korean limited series uh, called Bloodhounds about okay. Korean bo boxers that became hit uh, henchmen for the mob. It's weird. It is weird. It is weird. Yeah. I, um, I want to say I'll, I'll look into it, but I probably won't. Don't. <laughs> no, that's okay. Don't. I don't. don't. Uh, no, don't. I, I'm only watching it because, again, uh, since the pandemic, I've run out of things. If you've heard any of my things, I've run out of things to watch. I'm older, so I've tapped out on I've been on every streaming service you could possibly think of, and I'm not going to order Disney+. Plus. I'm not going to do it. Okay. So, But I've done I, everything else, and I've run out. Uh Speaking of if I've heard any of your stuff, I've heard pretty much all of your stuff since uh, I discovered your uh, online presence in, I think, 2015. I was bored. I've got a very similar story to you, actually. Um, okay. I grew up in uh, in a Pentecostal Christian Christian church, Christian background. Um, yeah. uh, sort of left that uh, circle for a while over just stupid reasons, um, but uh, never lost my faith, Never never lost my faith in God. Um, and yeah, 2015, I think it was when I was, uh, you know, when you could find, uh, things worth watching on YouTube, you know, um, right. you know, when it wasn't so censored, um, I think I come across, uh, Eric DePay's, Eric DePay's research first, like most people do. I've heard you say that quite a few times. Many and, times. Uh, and yeah. And then I, uh, discovered your work someone had compiled it into a single documentary called under the dome you've mentioned that quite a few times i think right and uh right. Then, so i started listening to that okay okay first of all uh, uh you presented it extremely well uh, you know that the clues um so i started going through that then i looked up the source so i found i found uh i found you and uh then from there, uh, my life has, has changed considerably. And back then, you were amazing. You were handing out your phone number constantly. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to try. I'm here in country South Australia. I'm going to give you a call. And you answered. I'm not sure if you remember, <laughs> but you answered. I, and I said, Mark, it's Lincoln from South Australia, mate. Is this, I said to you, is this thing real? And you went, it is 100% real and is gaining yeah. momentum fast. I'm like, wow, okay, tell me about it. So you got me to tune into Strange World on TFR back then. Is it still right. uh, Truth Frequency Radio? Is that still where you broadcast it, from mainly? No, no. After seven years on TFR, uh, Karen and I broke off, and uh, she just does it through her channel now. Okay, and so yeah, we're, we're, we we're brought, we broadcast actually in more things now than TFR ever did. So we simulcast on, on BitChute and Brideon and Rumble and, and all that sort of stuff. But sure. yeah, we were, we were on TFR for seven years. Yeah, that was a good run. I, I, I you know, come across some other uh, presenters uh, by that channel as well. And um, you would constantly say they're, they're great people to work with and to host your show. So shout out to them. Mark, yeah. can you, uh, for my listeners, can you uh, break it down for me? Tell me a bit about yourself and, um, and also where the people can find you as well. Thanks. Sure, sure. I, my name is Mark Sargent. I am an author slash public speaker slash part-time cult leader. And... I got into Flat Earth out of sheer conspiracy boredom back in 2014 
uh, when I was living in Colorado and, uh, you know, I, I was out there um, teaching proprietary software for 20 years and never got married or had kids. And so I had a lot of free time on my hands and pretty much went down every rabbit hole you could think of and pretty much finished the Internet at one point and, and looked at just about every conspiracy known to men. And I still wouldn't look at Flat Earth. That's how that's how bad it was. Right. I looked at every conspiracy you could think of. Flat Earth. Nope, not going to touch it. I, and so, the, so I wasn't getting any younger. So I decided, okay, I will. Um, I'll take a look at this. Sure, why not? You know, it's a bucket list thing at this point. And uh, in 2014, I thought I could finish it in a weekend. And nine months later, I'm staring at my machine, going, "I obviously am doing something wrong." So I decided to make a series of videos. Didn't even really have much of a plan. And I called them the, the Flat Earth Clues, and it was basically a cry for help on my part, which was like, okay, I don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a globe anymore. I can't prove the globe in a court of law. Here's a video, that, a series of videos why I think it may be, we may be living in some sort of snow globe, some sort of planetarium, a terrarium, and tell me where I'm wrong. And because of that, I put out, I did the, the smartest thing you could ever do, which was put all my contact information on the internet including my physical address, my full name, um, uh, you know, date of birth, phone number, everything. You, you, you know, I still don't recommend women should never, never, ever do that. And men really shouldn't do it either. But I did. And people started calling me and saying, yeah, it's not nuts. And here's why. It's like, what? Exactly. Exactly what <laughs> and, you said to me. I, I just like, what is this? And you said that it, this is real gaining momentum. It's, it's not nuts, man. Like this is happening. No. Yeah. No, and it just kept building and building and building to where um, su subject matter experts were getting involved and uh, and celebrities were getting involved. Mm. And then other people were, were creating content. So you, and now to where the, the first three years we were doing it, like 2015 through 2018, you we were YouTube's binge topic. YouTube was recommending us hard to where yeah. I mean, it's like no matter what you searched for, it's like, you know, you know, you know, tractor maintenance. Oh, really? Here's three flat earth videos and we're going to recommend for you on the side. And yeah. people, and, and finally somebody got involved with YouTube where, where they're like, yeah, this probably isn't a good idea. Mm -hmm. So then they, they, they took their, their foot off the gas. They didn't kill the channels, but they definitely, um, they, they took the monetization down, I think like 70%, which was just brutal for, for some of us. And uh, yeah, here we are eight years later. And, you know, I don't know how many conferences, uh, how many uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meetups uh, and, you know, books and endorsement stuff. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, we'd be, we, we, we could, let's put it this way. In 2019, all the way up to the beginning of 2020, we could do no wrong. We were, mm -hmm. we were absolutely golden. And then the pandemic hit and we couldn't do conferences and we couldn't do meetups. And we, I mean, I couldn't do international travel anymore. It was like, oh crap. And three years, three years after that, it's like now we're, we're, you know, we finally just did our big conference in Vegas, which we should have done three years ago. And yeah, Flat uh, Fest, I saw that. Yeah. Flat Tober Fest was so fun. So much fun. I'm so glad that Karen did it. Uh, it was, you know, it, it was great. And I was so proud of her. Uh, you know, she was the, she's one of the few female there's lots of women in flat earth that's the weird part like when we went to the conference 40 percent of the conference was women mm -hmm. however it's different to be a woman in flat earth and a woman who's willing to put herself out there as a flat earth content creator right because right. you know the trolls are way more harsh to uh mm -hmm. to women on the internet than they are men way 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 harsher which is why patricia got hit as, as hard as she did and yeah, uh, yeah. so 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 uh, speaking of Patricia, I, like I said, discovered you guys in uh, 2015. So I guess if you got into it 2014, uh, happy anniversary, 10 years for you. Would, would that be right? Yeah, this will. Well, you know, I don't officially going to, nah, I'm not going to take, take, take okay. that decade long thing. I, my, the clues were first done in February of 2015. So yeah, okay. this February, wow, we, I got on early. I was right in. The, I was I was the startup crew, man. That's good to hear. You were, you were. <laughs> um, it, but it'll be nine years this February, and uh, yeah, yeah. But but technically, yeah, I was looking into it in the summer, but I didn't build anything till till February twenty fifteen. Yeah, cool. Uh, so Patricia, um, she uh, sort of 
like you said, uh, fell victim to, to trolling and yep. and sort of has disappeared. Then she came back for, uh, on a side channel for a while there. Um, I guess my <laughs> algorithm said, you know, you, you may know, um, but haven't seen her for years. Uh, how is she? What's she doing? Um, and are you guys still in contact? We haven't been in contact for a couple of years now. Um, and that is mostly because when, oh God, I, I, I'll be as candid as I can here. You know, she went up, she went up to London, right? She was going to, uh, she was trying to hook up with a guy named, named Antonio Subarez and she was going to marry him. And she's like, okay, sure. And he was one of ours and that the whole thing just fell apart. So she moved back to the States. I mean, after moving, I mean, she committed, she spent like 30,000 American to ship all her stuff over there via freight and then ship it all back after it all went went south and she condemned the relationship so hard to where she wanted everybody in flat earth to blackball him basically you know she wanted she wanted the kids to pick sides right it's like okay you're either with him or you're with me yeah yeah and and if you're not with me we're not talking and it was like, look, the, the, he, no, no offense to, to Patricia, but she was a Flat Earth interview person. She didn't make isolated Flat Earth videos. She interviewed a lot of yeah. people and she was yeah. on different yeah. things. And she was interviewed very well, you know, the most notably um, CBS Sunday Morning with Jane Pauley, which was just an amazing interview, one of the finest mm. ever. And um, when, but Antonio had been made, he was prolific. He had made a, a ton of content over the years. And so when nobody wanted to change their stance, she just walked. That was it. Now, truth be told, it was also that an accommodation of the trolls that came after her. Uh, you know, they they hit her hard. She was the 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 absolute perfect storm of trolldom. Not only was she the triple threat, which was she was beautiful, she was rich, and she was Jewish. <laughs> Between those three, the trolls are going to just, they're going to be merciless, right? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. on top of it, she made it known that she was going to read every single comment on every single video, which the trolls, that's thats thats just manna from heaven for the trolls. It's yeah. like, no matter what I say, she's going to read it. Oh, I don't care if she deletes it. She's going to read everything. And I, I warned her, you know, I, I said, look, what's going to happen when you have 50 videos? What happens when you have 100 videos? You're still going to go through? She goes, yes, I'm going to go through every single video. I go, you're going to snap, girl. You're going to mm. lose it. Mm. And she did. She, yeah. they, they, um, they did it. Do you know what a wellness check is? I don't know if they do yeah, those absolutely. in Australia. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. They, well, they, it's, uh, they, yeah, they did a wellness check at her house. Mm. And I, I remember I was on the phone with her when it happened. And she, you know, she wow. smiles at the cops when they come to the door. It's like, oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Shuts the door. And I can hear this, you know, F this. It's wow. like, I'm done. And she burned her whole yeah. channel down. Mm, yeah, yeah, so, go on. Yeah. 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 Anyway, long story short, uh, Patricia's not gone. You know, she could mm. still, like, a, you know, I, I suggested on air a couple times. She, she could have gone to Flattoberfest, been welcomed with open arms. There's tons of people out there. And I kept I kept all the interviews that we ever did on my channel. So the, there's a whole section of, you know, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes with Patricia Steer on my channel. Uh, yeah. I cherish everything we did together and, uh, you know, hope hope eventually she she comes back around. We'll and great episodes as well. They're, they're worth looking looking up if uh, if people want to check that out. So um, uh, uh, what's what's your ch what's your channel for people to find you on YouTube? What's the best? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, if well on YouTube, seriously, if you want to make it easy, just go into any search engine and type in Flat Earth Mark. Yeah, you type in Flat Earth yeah. Mark, you will find it no matter what it is. Um, if you try to type, I mean, you could type Flat Earth Mark into YouTube, by the way, and I will show up. But you could yeah. type that into anywhere, and I will I will show up. Don't don't try to look for Mark Sargent or anything like that, or Flat Earth and Mark Sargent. You know, it's going to be tougher. Just Flat Earth Mark, you'll find it. Hmm. Hmm. Yep, and uh, that's where people can start on the on the on the Flat Earth clues. Yeah, is that what you call yeah. it? The clues. Yep yeah. the the original the original Flat Earth clues are still there. They they were never taken down, so they're still date stamped. Thank God. Yeah. My channel yeah. should have been should have been destroyed so many times. Um, for medical misinformation, um, but but they're still there from back from 2015, and uh, which was which was weird because the clues, you know, it's like you, you look at them, it's like oh yeah, they got quite a few hits. They, it doesn't you know, it's not an obscene amount of hits. I go no, those are the where I got all the hit 
early hits from were from because I made a Creative Commons license where the people that took my clues and I told I didn't ask for permission. It's like, you know, you know, it's like, hey, great, grab them. And they compiled them into their on their own channels. So one's called They're Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. One yeah. is called um, They're Hiding God with the Biggest Lie Ever. And another one is called uh, Under the Dome Full Documentary. Yeah, which yeah. I still have never talked to these guys. Whoever these three these three individuals are, they got millions of hits right away. Millions of hits. And That's where I come across it. Then I've chased you down. Yeah. 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 I mean, like Daryl Marble. He was a, like now one of them again. The, the click chasers. They were some of the first generation click chasers under the Dome Full documentary. That was a bit of a rip off from the, the Stephen King television series Under the right. Dome. Right, right. And yeah. so people yeah. people watched the Under the Dome series that was on network television, and then they found it on YouTube thinking it was related. And by the yeah. time they realized it's like, wait a minute, this has nothing to do with the television show, they were hooked. So it's like, oh, yeah. let's let's just keep going with that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, 2023 is done. Um, can you give me three highlights uh, of the year or lowlights? Uh, three <laughs> Three dot points, three majors. What, what's happened this year for you before we move on to 24? Uh, 23. Okay. It was the year that the Ukraine war was a media focus point, And then once it, okay. The Ukraine war took away the focus point from the pandemic. And then the Gaza thing took the focus point away from Ukraine. So, you know, like Zelensky's looking for stuff now uh, that, you know, he's looking for money and people are like, Zelensky who? It's like, you couldn't exactly. get this guy off the freaking news. And now he's having a hard time, you know, asking for, for, for lunch money. Yeah. Um, the second thing would probably be, oh, for me, the, the lowlights would be the fact that women's sports is being destroyed by something we're not even really allowed to talk about that much but I'll, I'll mention it it's like look you know when the, there was a canadian weightlifter who you know transitioned over and went into canadian weightlifting and beat the second person almost doubled the weight almost what doubled it what a disaster and i i felt so bad it's like look i grew up with, with female athletes and uh, including my sister and it's like, look, there's a reason why we we have them like this. There isn't a sport out there, unless you count like ice skating, that 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 is even close. So that was a, that was a real low light for me. Um, and you know what? I'll throw in a weird one for you. You want? You want? It's not even a low light. It's just where America is right now. Um, the fact that Taylor Swift got Person of the Year, Time Magazine yeah. Person of the Year. And and believe it or not, as much as I had that reaction you did just then. I thought at, in after a while I was thinking about because I watched the I, you know I look at so many different news boards from different countries in our country and it's like you know what I I know exactly what Time Magazine was it's like why not we gotta we gotta nominate somebody so yeah, it, yeah. it's like why why isn't it her at this point it's, she's the only tour that 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 anyone gave a crap about and it's like we're trying to tie her to the NFL you know the professional football with that one guy it's like that's a complete relationship of convenience that has nothing to do with anything yeah. um and it's like yeah that's that's where america is right now where we we nominated a pop star as person of the year not not because of political activism remember bono i think won it years ago yeah yeah i bought that that um that cover that that cover i was i was in america i was coming home from america man that would have been maybe two uh, 2002 or three uh, around yeah. then, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. uh, I was in America at a, at a Christian, Christian camp over there for six weeks down in Atlanta, which, which was awesome. I had such a good time, uh, but yeah, nice. on the way home or yeah, on the way home or there, I, yeah, I remember seeing that in the airport. I'm like, whoa, cause I was a massive U2 fan. And then you oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I remember one of the, the, nice. the bylines, which was can Bono save the world. And it's yeah. like, you know, and it's like, yeah, I know he's an extreme activism. I think it's a bit much, a little, little heavy handed, but that's fine. Mm. With Taylor, it's like, yeah, Taylor had a good year. Did she deserve person of the year? Because yeah. <laughs> remember who last year's was? It no. was it was Zelensky. Oh, no. oh. It's like, that's what that's where we've gone. 
those you videos know, of him dancing like uh, Beyonce and the girls in the single ladies lit up. Oh. Is, cool? is he an actor? Is he a, is he in performing <laughs> arts? Or, or are those videos very, very... No, 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 they're absolutely, no, they're absolutely wow. real. He, he is wow. an ex. He might as well have been a Saturday Night Live cast member for Europe. Yeah. And it's and which is why you know some of the actors, some of our actors, one of them like Sean Penn went and visited mm. him, and Ben Stiller oh, went that's and visited. Right. Oh man, I worship him with the. Doesn't Sean Penn give him his Golden Globe or his uh, Academy Award or something? Something like something, that, yeah. Something from my home into your home. Oh. He's, oh, you know, he's an actor. <laughs> He's he's yeah. an actor he's an slash actor. puppet. Yeah. He is. He's he's absolutely an actor. He's he's just a puppet that is like come on. The, the it's it's a proxy war. Everybody knows it. On on our side, I, I I think the um the the special ops guys are just laughing at home because we everyone mm. all, the guys like me and a lot of other guys, it's like we know it's 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 um no it's art, the US and the SAS, you know, from the UK. We know it's those guys. That's all mm. that's all they're they're the guys that are doing the stuff. But 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 again, Russia isn't going for it. Kudos to them. The the fact that they you know they were gonna the be the obvious villain, but they didn't take the bait. They're like, no, we're just gonna take notes. We'll get to you eventually. <laughs> but right now, we're not falling for it. Do you think whoever uh, is running this world um, has convinced Russia, Ukraine that they're actually buddy buddy anyway? And it's all just a distraction for what is really going on behind the scenes. Like I've heard that um, um, Hillary Clinton's daughter Chelsea is best friends with Ivanka Trump, and they babysit each other's kids. And they're, I mean, is it all just a show, or or do you have some? It appears not not every level is for show, but yes, there's mm -hmm. way too many pictures of. I mean, when it comes to politics. Oh boy, it, there, it's kind of like Hollywood rules. There was a wonderful Mel Gibson line that he talked about. He goes, the thing about Hollywood, you want to know how to survive in the business. He goes, you got to remember that the guy you screw over tomorrow is probably the guy that's going to screw you in a couple of years, right? Yeah. Everybody's out yeah. for everybody else. So when you see Trump in the same pictures with other people, you know, with, with yeah. Democrats yeah. and Republicans, um, and, and you see, you know, people, you know, the Obamas hanging out with the Bushes and sure, yeah, yeah. sure. Why not? Because at certain levels, and I don't want to get too deep into politics, but look, it is theater. Uh, you know, Shakespeare, all the world's a stage. And when it comes to mm -hmm. politics, American politics, the, the whoever's president, it's, it's not that, you know, it's not that they're elected, they're selected, right? They are, they are merely their own press secretaries. That's all they are. In fact, their level of clearance, I'll give you a, a quick story really fast. Their level of clearance is so low compared to other people. I mean, they barely crack top secret when it comes to level levels of clearance. Um, Eisenhower, you know, one of, I consider the, the the greatest president, we the last great president of any influence that we had back in the you know he 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 was the guy that ran the Allied forces during World War II, and then after World War II, it's like, whoa, why can't he be president? Sure, why not? So he becomes president, and the story goes, and I love this one. It's it's quick. He supposedly, um, he didn't oversee, but he found out about Area 51 because it was being built then. And he knew it was getting finished up. So he makes a phone call because, you know, he has the phone number to the place. He calls up. He's, hey, I'd like to come out and take a tour. Right. And they told him, well, sorry, you're just president now. You don't have clearance to come out. Right. Wow. Now, if okay. I know. Right. And because yeah. this is a guy who used to be one of the few five star generals in the history of generals here. And, and, and his response was, as you can imagine, somewhat terse because he was bent out of shape. It's like, you know, he started to develop a facial tick and he was like, so here's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to call a couple of my friends. You know, one of them runs the first army division and yeah. we're going to take a little field exercise. And we're going to come out to Nevada and we're just going to see it for ourselves. What do you think about that? <laughs> right. And then the, after a pause, the, 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 that's that's the rumor anyway and the pause was yeah. you know that finally every 51 it's like yeah fine you can just come out and see it it's like yeah yeah of course but he was the last guy that could pull those sorts of strings sure but the sure, point yeah. the point there was is that the second he became president his clearance level went from here down to here so yeah. uh, every president yeah, that's that's in there now you know they're they're just you know people that that are meant to be in front of the camera we have learned that slowly but surely. Come on, Trump was 
I, I don't care whether you love it or uh, love him or hate him. I don't vote, but he came from reality television mm. deliberately. Yeah. Right? It's like yeah. we, we, yeah. And it's not the first time we did it. Ronald Reagan was a B-list actor. He did movies with chimps back yeah, in the yeah. day, right? Yeah. And Obama got got training. He got acting coaching from uh, Harry. Oh crap, Harry Benix, the 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 black guy that played uh, the general in the Superman movies recently. Mm, yeah, right. And it's, it's it's like yeah that we we've gotten better and better and better, which is why I'm surprised that Blue Team doesn't put forward a, a full blown actor. You know, yeah. instead of, I mean, they seriously, Oprah could step in in two seconds. George Clooney, I mean, al- almost all the actors are blue team. Yeah. So you could, you could, and you pick them for whatever reason that it's not part of the plan. Anyway, sorry, yeah. I rambled. Yeah, for sure. No, no, this is, this is great. Now, you've, you've just reminded me of something today being the uh, first of January 2024 in the United States. The right. list, the Epstein list is supposed to be released today. Right. Um, right. you, you obviously uh, know that this is the date that that's all happening. Have you heard anything or when can we expect to see this list? Because the, I've the, also seen, uh, I don't know if they're mock-ups, but um, on Twitter or X, uh, I've seen this person's on the list, um, uh, all these people. And now Oprah's gone missing um, or, or tried to escape with $200 million and, and all this. So, yeah. Uh, is this mock-up list that we've seen a little bit of so far, is that the 177 people that we can expect in the next couple of days? No, no. no. It, will okay. be, it will be much shorter. Um, and the reason is this. Think, think about it, as much as, yes, the general public would love to see the, the full-blown list because, you know, the general public loves gossip. Right. There's a reason why soap mm. operas last for decades and decades and yeah. why why TMZ still to this day will ne- is never going to die. You could you right. couldn't kill TMZ if you wanted to. Um, the, the reason the, the public would love to see it, but think of the, of the powers that be. We'll just use the CIA as a, as a great example. Right. The CIA has a vested interest in this list to keep most of it private. Yeah. And the reason yeah. is because in, let's just say I was in the CIA. All of a sudden you get a hold of this list and you get to see it before anyone. You now have leverage access against powerful people, right? Maybe not as powerful as some of your people, but definitely people in different avenues. And you have it for pennies on the dollar, meaning you can now influence, you can black, let's just call it what it is, right? You can blackmail a lot of people using this. It's like, Oh, it's you. All you have to do is make a phone call. It's like, yeah, we need your endorsement on this. We need you to make a donation on this. We need you to talk about, use these talking points. If you don't, Hey, we've got the video. And do I, do I think that Epstein is dead? Yeah, I do. Um, because oh, really? no, I do, because you don't need, you've, you've watched enough movies over the years. You don't need him. And what is her, how you pronounce her name? Jelaine, Jelaine, is that it? Gillane, Gillane Maxwell. Gil- Gillane. 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 We'll, we'll call it. Okay. You know Gillane. Talking about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't need her, him, and Ghislaine alive. In fact, she's probably got more access than he does. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he watched the tapes, but she was the one that helped set things up. She was the madam behind the scenes. She, I realized really quickly, once once you saw what she was about, it's like, oh, no, she was the intel. So you make him go away, right, and, you know, sacrifice him again. People think he's alive. Hey, great, but you didn't need him to be alive, but you definitely keep her around. Because she can verify stuff. It's like, hey, this tape's kind of grainy. Who are we looking at here? Oh, yeah, that's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> she yeah. goes, I can tell you I can tell you all sorts of stuff about that night. Not to mention, if you want to do that, go over to this room over here and look at this tape. This was great. Mm. You have the tapes on everything. So, But will there have to be sacrifices? Yes, the public is going to demand it. Politicians are going to demand it. Um, you're going to sacrifice some of the smaller fish, some of the more important people that are tied to money. So so will you sacrifice some politicians? Sure. Will you sa- sacrifice some entertainment people? Sure. Are you going to sacrifice corporate interests? Probably not so much because mm. though that's that's where the real influence is, money. You know, um, so, you know, I've, I've heard a few things, you know, do I think that like Bill Clinton will get sacrificed? Yeah, probably, because he, he was one of the most high profile things. You, his name came up so many freaking times. Do I think any of the royal family will? Eh, I don't think so. I, I don't, you know, the, the what's his face? Um, the, the guy that Andrew. got that snapshot with with the blonde. Yeah, Andrew. 
Yeah. 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 He's already been through the, through the ringer. Anyway, there's, there's nothing yeah. new you're going to get, you're going to get from them. He's, he's one step short of just living out in the countryside somewhere never to be seen. Um, so anyway, the list is going to be very short. We'll see. I mean, they've drugged this thing up for a while, but I, mm. I think the public will still be, the public will get enough to where they'll be somewhat satisfied, but there you, you wait, there'll be a lot of names afterwards and be like, why is, why aren't we talking about this or why aren't we talking yeah, about this person? Right. Because well, that, I it's, mean, it's, it's, it's it, leverage. It's, it's, that, that happens. And then another distraction happens. It's like nothing ever gets dealt with. Like the public's uh, attention span is getting shorter and shorter by the day. Oh. Like, well, the, the fact that we have YouTube shorts, that's, that's a, yeah. that's a great example of it. When, yeah. when did well, t- I, uh, TikTok's I, the same uh, reels on Instagram? It's just flick flick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Gold, goldfish, even, even goldfish have longer attention spans. No, <laughs> no. It I mean, yeah, no, I've, true. I've run into kids. It's like, you know, they go, mm. oh, seriously, I don't want to watch a nine minute video. It's like, are you serious? <laughs> it's like, yeah. We do streams for well, I mean, Jaron just from Jaronism, he just ran a a, a twelve hour. It was it twelve hours? I I saw four hours leading up to New Year. I I, I clicked on it. Um, oh yeah, he ran twelve hours. Channel. Yeah, he ran twelve hours. It was crazy. All I, saw, all I saw was Dave sitting on the couch with the sunglasses on. Just like, he he'd had it. He had enough by hour one. It was hilarious. He's a cracker. How how is Dave, by the way? How's his app going? And uh, what can we expect in 2024 on the uh, Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app? Uh, well, it, the app's going very, very well. Uh, he's he's put a lot of time and a lot of effort. It's good. The features are fantastic. Um, he's going to be heading down to Mexico and broadcasting from there. He spends his winters now in Mexico. Okay. So uh, he'll, he's going to be heading down there and, and doing interviews from there hopefully it'll get better bandwidth than he did before because i know it was a little rough when he was did, when he did it last year uh but uh, but he and i uh got a chance to hang out we had dinner at the um flytober fest when we were out yeah. there and he didn't he didn't speak he doesn't like doing we'll, we'll see i i think i can get him to do a public speaking thing uh you know actually do a full uh, presentation at next flytober fest i got a couple ideas for that i might even be able to, to help him there but he was great. I mean, he had a he had a booth set up, and everyone came and, and said hi, and and um, he, he he made himself available the entire time. It was awesome, and he was the guy that got uh, that big YouTuber to to go to the event and troll us. He was the the Tyler he Oliveri in a massive way. Yeah, saw it. He he trolled you guys in a massive way. Hey, he did. He did. Uh, did you fall and for it? because I remember you didn't fall for Jake Paul. Um, oh, for no Logan, ago. Logan Paul. Yeah. No, Logan no, Paul, I did, yeah. I didn't. But, but I was one of the few guys because Logan's demographic always skews so young. You know, he skews mm. his, his demographic is junior high boys, and you're thinking that's mm. kind of weird. It's like no, he's he's trying to be. He only be able to pull this off for a little bit longer, which is why he switched over to wrestling. Um, but he's always been like, oh, I want to show junior high boys how cool it is to prank somebody. Right when he was in his late teens, and now he's mid twenties, and now he's doing wrestling. Um, no, I didn't buy it back then, but that I was one of the few people to do internet research. I remember doing a meeting the night before he came on with a lot of the presenters. I go, "You can't let this guy get on stage. This guy is a freaking professional clown, right?" And they're like, "Sir, we don't know who he is." It's like, "Oh my god, you guys need to do research outside of flat Earth every a, once in a while." A quick research, just YouTube him quickly, and you, you, you like robbie davidson i think he, he would have said nope immediately I'm thinking, oh, well so, oh, okay yeah. yeah that's that's not entirely true though because in robbie's case he he fell to the victim of a lot of promoters which was he took the money um logan basically bribed robbie to keep his mouth shut mm-hmm. he was like look i will buy a whole bunch of vip tickets i will buy hotel block things i will buy all sorts of crap but you have to promise me no one knows and I'll be damned if Robbie didn't keep this app. He didn't tell anybody. He didn't even yeah. tell, he didn't tell the inner circles. He didn't tell, you know, the Ben Franklin's line, the best way to keep a secret between three people, kill two mm-hmm. of them. Oh, and yeah. that was Rob, yeah. that was Robbie Davidson. I mean, he absolutely kept a secret. So yeah. no, no, Rob, Robbie knew. He was just hoping that we would forgive him because at the time Logan had like 6 million subs and people back then didn't realize that it's like, oh yeah, by the way, you can buy as many subs as you want. It's unlimited. Mm-hmm. You just go out there and buy it. By the way, if you've never watched the, the documentary Fake Famous, 
It is a fantastic documentary. You want to know what anyone under the age of 30, what's going on in their head when it comes to social media, fake famous. It's absolutely fantastic. Awesome. Okay. Um, 2024, what can we expect, Mark? What's, and what, and what's, uh, what's on the cards for you? What have you got coming up? Um, do you have um, a, a big year planned or do you just sort of take it as it comes? Uh, like, you know, when I emailed you about an interview, Hey, by the way, thank you for being so transparent and uh, contactable. Um, yet you've always written back, even in your show, um, uh, the other, the other day with Karen in between breaks, you're writing back to me. Hey, thanks for the uh, heads up about Elon Musk's, uh, a hyper loop. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It, it Look, you go with what works and mm. for whatever reason, being transparent in the beginning, uh, even though there's still a lot of people that just it's like, oh my God, you shouldn't put your contact information out there. It's like, look, mm. it's not like people can't find me anyway. Mm. You know, it's not like I'm super secret. No one, no one gets to dox me because I've already been doxed. So, um, but, yeah. but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do it. And uh, as far as the plans for 20, my plan, personal tr- yeah. plans for 24, um, nothing really huge right off the, right off the bat. I'm, I'm just going to, again, uh, if, if I live long enough to write an auto- autobiography, it'll be called unsolicited because okay. I just, I don't have to call people. People just call me. Um, the, the first trip I'm going on, in fact, I just booked the, um, the, the flights for it. Uh, the, there's a group doing people, people do take me out to flat earth meetups. So I'm doing a, uh, flat earth meetup in, uh, Utah which will uh, come up and, and it's like, it's a paid, paid thing where people like pay, pay to, to come to this dinner where I'm going to be at. Mm. So that'll be kind of fun. And then after That's that, fun. we'll see. Yeah. But so this as, is, this is what you do full time since 2014, 15. Um, yeah. This you went is from cool. uh, software programming into uh, content creating. Um, yeah. Like yeah. And d- yeah. Yeah, it is full time. And I mean, I was lucky enough again, if you're not married, you don't have kids and you made some decent investments over the years. It's not it's mm. not like I'm I'm hurting. But at the same time, uh, I remember there's this lady, a producer from True Television. She told me back in 2015, she's she saw the writing on the wall and she's going, yeah, she goes, you got to make yourself mobile. She goes, get out of Colorado, you know, put your stuff, put your stuff in storage, hang out with family because you're going to be going d- different places. You she goes, you're you're going to be moving around, be, be prepared to travel. And it's like, wow. And she wasn't kidding. And, and she, I felt so bad for her because she was like, she goes, this is absolutely could be a reality show. Absolutely could be a reality show. And, um, they fired her for it. <laughs> she was like, she went to the pitch meeting, you know, I had a full blown sizzle reel with like myself and Jaron and, um, uh, some of the old timers from back in 2015, Patricia wasn't even on the, that sizzle reel. And, and you can imagine, right. The lights come up and the VP is like, so Rebecca, a word in my office, right? <laughs> and that was it. She was done. Wow. And you fast forward and she kept coming to our conferences to when finally uh, Behind the Curve came out on Netflix. Mm. Mm. That same VP called her and, and said, I am so sorry. Wow. I am so sorry. We, we had no idea. But it's, mm. it's tough. Like there was, we've had people that have tried to turn Flat Earth into a reality show for a number of years. The, the latest being um, Kelsey Grammer. The actor who's got his own production company um, from mm-hmm. from Frasier, and he goes, he goes, look, he goes, we absolutely can do the show. That's not the problem. You can build a show all day long. Who's going to distribute it? Right? What network? Unless it's pointless to do a show unless you have a network willing to air it for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in his case, he's like, look, I was going to front all the, the basically all the funds for it, and but I I could not find even with my connections. I couldn't find the um, the the distributor for it. Anyway, mm. so tw- mm. 2024, um, there is only one thing that's going to be the the well, at least ex- except for possibly the infrastructure explosion, you know, implosion that, that may happen in the United States. But and like you said, there's lots of distractions everywhere. But the biggest circus, without a question, will be the election. Everybody's been waiting for it. We're now officially, as of today, in the election year. And it is going to be, uh, you You don't, well, maybe, I mean, I'm sure you've got a, kind of an inkling of what's happening, but it is, I've never seen this country so polarized in all my life. Everybody self-identifies by either red team or blue team. Are you Republican? Are you Democrat? Are you Trump? Are you Biden? And it, it, it is the hype has already started, right? Which is, you know, neither side, here's where it gets weird, right? 
Trump doesn't have to do a whistle stop campaign because he's going to be in the courthouse steps pretty much the the solid part of the beginning of this year. You know that they they the the court him being dragged into court that is just a distraction and a way to keep him off the campaign trail. That's all that is. But what's weirder? Here's the part that's freaking people out is Biden's not campaigning. Well, it's, 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 he's your incumbent president, right? Going for re-election. Why, why aren't there banners everywhere? Why aren't there Biden 24 bumper stickers everywhere? And that is because there's, a, and you probably heard me say this, or maybe, maybe you haven't, there's this secret little thing that's happening behind the scenes where, and, and initially it started as a rumor last year. And I, if it, two years ago, I would have, I would have just laughed you out of the room. But the, the rumor is, is that before the Democratic convention happens, Biden will be replaced by Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, mm-hmm. or Michelle Obama. Yeah, I knew you were going to say Big Mike. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and you th- well, you know, yeah, you know the story behind that. It's like, yeah, and and, and as much as that sounds like a joke, you know, it's like, okay, what's the punchline? It's like, there is no punchline. The punchline yeah. is the media is not laughing about it. They're not even talking about it. Normally, the, the blue team media would jump all over this and say, you're never going to believe what, what the Republicans are believe now, right? Michelle Obama. And the reason why they're not laughing about it or talking about well, one, because they get the orders from on high not to talk about it. But the other thing is, mm-hmm. from a blues team standpoint, it's a good idea. It's yeah. a really good idea. Because if you get Michelle, you get Barack. And means Barack is technically in the White House again, even though he already ran his two terms. And and it is it is it is a nightmare for Republicans because it's like what are you talking about? She's not a politician in any way, shape, or form. You might as well run um, uh, Trump's wife, right? If, if you're uh, you run anything, she she slash he does it hasn't done anything. But yeah. everyone's waiting for this punchline to happen. But it's going to take yeah. months before it yeah. does but in fact that the gavin newsom was did an actual television debate with ron DeSantis recently mm. from the, you know the governor of florida and yeah, on, yeah. on television like what why, why is he debating ron DeSantis? nobody wanted to talk about why why are they debating what what are they going to what were the topics oh you know general crap you know state okay. state of the union um yeah, uh-oh. yeah do people actually tune in and and that, well, that's just it. Some people did, but but it did, wasn't really advertised much. I think it right. was to do a quick uh, canvas re- in real time of how Gavin, because Gavin's rusty, right? He hasn't been yeah. on the national yeah. stage. Ever. It's like we, you can imagine, right? These are the meetings that happen behind the scenes. It's like we need to get this guy on, t- on TV. All right, let's get him with DeSantis. Because remember, they're the backups. In mm-hmm. case something happens to Trump, DeSantis is the guy. Everybody knows that. Yeah, and in case something happens to Biden, well, we don't know who the guy is, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, what? Why not? Why not Gavin? And so the question is now, where everyone again, it's, we won't know until the last minute. Is that is will Gavin be president, and then Mike would be VP, yeah. <laughs> or is it, or would it be the other way around? We don't know. But yeah. either way, either way, no matter which way you go, you get Barack back in back in the office. And yeah. by the way, with the people that say, oh, you know, Barack's running Biden's campaign, it's like, well, not really. <laughs> the powers that be are running any campaign. If you want to go and choose, and by the way, there's some people that say, oh, the Clintons are running all, both of them. It's like, no, no, there's the food chain goes up much, much higher than that. Mm-hmm. But if you want to believe that, that's fine. Sorry. There you go. Yeah, no, no, no great. Um, <laughs> do you know or are you friends with um, true honest Biden supporters and can you point out videos of Biden just fumbling his way through a press conference or even just shaking hands of people that don't even exist like do you know those people who support Biden like you know no uh, no no they don't no and and blue team it's there's a bit of hypocrisy when it comes to blue team blue team knows full well it's like honestly I would have lost money on my my friend that, that helps me work on strange world you know, we, uh, uh, Master Gunner, Brian Burton, the master, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he was, you know, we, he was like, there's no way Biden's going to make it through his first term. I mean, he's going to fall and break a hip, right? He's, he's really in bad shape up there. So kudos to whoever's pumping him full of drugs and, you know, putting leg 
things in his pants to where, you know, he doesn't tip over and you've got guys mm -hmm. close by to where he doesn't fall. It's like, that's yeah. amazing that the fact you've yeah. done it. Now, Grant, he hasn't done that many public speaking things. Let's face it. Mm. Um, and, and it's like, He's also not going to be campaigning because one, he probably can't do a debate even if he wanted to, and and a whistle stop tour would just about kill him. But no, nobody believes that that he should be run for second term. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. No and Kamala. Like, yeah. And Kamala is a joke. Everybody. Oh, it, Kamala, what a joke, man! Australia Sky News makes so much fun of her. Like, uh, what, what do you call it, them? Word salads, I think. Yeah. She's got, unfortunately, um, what, if you play poker at all, she's got a huge tell and it's that laugh, which I, she, they've actually coached her over the years and it's gotten better. But it was so bad in the beginning, you know, that nervous yeah. laugh. And it's yeah, not just yeah. a ner nervous giggle. It's a nervous cackle. It's and a, it's a disaster. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a giveaway. So everyone, so people are saying, well, you know, maybe, you know, if something happened to Joe, she'd step in. And it's like, well, that would be a nightmare. Sure. And if yeah. you want to make, yeah. okay. The, the second part of this, which is the, what, what I'm looking for is some sort of critical mass in 2024 where America, you know, in 2023, there's one, let me, let me add a, a, an addendum to that, which is in 23 efforts were made on all side to make America look as weak as possible. How what they're trying to do is they're trying to bait other countries into getting into a war with America with the United States. They've been trying this for a while and nobody's going for it. Because at the highest level, military guys, at the highest level, military guys are pretty smart. They're not like the ground troops, right? They're not that dumb. And they look at America, and I, I was trying to put this out recently. I was going, look, America has spent so much money on defense over the since World War II, right? Huge, ridiculous amounts of money on defense. We've still got all the equipment, all the toys, and these guys know this. So what? Even if America, yeah, fine, America's divided. You know, we're polarized. We've got huge border problems. We've got huge economy and infrastructure problems. You really going to try to take them on? It's like trying to take on the Roman Empire as it's receding. It's like, yeah, they're weakened, but you want to be? Who's going to be the first person to cross that line? Because whoever is the first person is going to be incinerated, and they know this. So like when um, uh, China still hasn't taken Taiwan, China owns Taiwan. Everybody knows it. China, for whatever reason, isn't going to invade and take it. I don't know what China has disappointed me to no end. Russia, KG, they know better. They're like, yeah, fine. You want to exchange cruise missiles? We'll do that all day long. We'll yeah. do drones and you can do drones. And the, which leads to the question, it's like, if you're in a war with a country, but the media doesn't cover it, are you still in a war? No, you're not. <laughs> we we're yeah. we're blowing up stuff. They're blowing up stuff. In fact, they're doing uh, industrial espionage over here and in Britain. They've got a thing, by the way, for Britain. Oh God, you wait. If this thing ever goes hot, Britain. I don't know if you remember the animation where Russia was toying with people. It's like, oh, by the way, we have a special atomic tsunami torpedo that we'll put off your west coast. And, yeah. and they showed the graphic of this giant radioactive tidal wave that just wiped out all of UK. And they put this on net, their national television and they're laughing. That's and awesome. Britain was just horrified. It's like, yeah, they're, we're kidding. <laughs> this is what this is the stuff they want to they want to do. But anyway, you know that's what, what I think. Can, that I, can they... I just change subjects for a second? You just reminded yeah. me of something you mentioned on one of your shows maybe a couple of years ago. You mentioned, and you're the only uh, broadcaster that I've heard mention, Homestar Runner. Do you remember Homestar Runner, <laughs> that cartoon? Yes, Do I I'm like, finally, someone <laughs> knows Homestar Runner. Dude, that was such a funny animation. Do you remember? Home, Homestar Runner. By the way, thank you. By the way, for bringing that up, I haven't, I haven't even thought about Homestar Runner in a while. Um, yeah. Homestar Runner was a rite of passage in the early, well, late '90s, early 2000s, um, on the internet. Which was, remember, there were only so many cool internet sites out there back in yeah, the day. Yeah. And Homestar Runner was this wonderful. Oh, was it Flash animation that um, made by these yeah. these two guys? I think they were brothers. And they, 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 I mean, the content was just deep. I mean, the, all yeah. these cool cartoons and they read emails. Yeah. From, me, uh, it's strong bad. With the, let me try to check the email. Uh, let's get uh, Let me uh, check me. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
dear strong guy, how can you yeah. type with boxing gloves? You know, and and that is a just, very good question. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was absolutely yeah, brilliant. And really and was, they would yeah. show up at at different comic book conventions, and mm. the, they were really really cool guys. But yeah, Homestar Runner. If he, in fact, it, I'm pretty sure it's it's out there now. I, there's no way they're gonna let that thing die. Yeah, so if you've never looked at HomestarRunner.com, yeah. please by all means, because if even if they did, I'm sure people have archived it and put it back up in video format. In fact, on YouTube, you could type in Homestar Runner, and I'm sure, I'm sure it's it still there. there. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I was uh, uh, in a studio for quite a bit uh, back then, recording CDs, <laughs> CDs, and uh, yeah, and uh, our producer he got us onto this. He goes, "You guys got to see this," and it's like you know, you watch the first one, it's like oh, okay, but then you watch the second one, that's kind of funny. Then you're into it, you know, it doesn't take long. Oh yeah, and you, and you get you get hooked to. You to do, where, yeah. yeah, I'm embarrassed to say, kind of embarrassed to say, because really all, only the cool people know know about that site, where yeah. you could show, you could you could do a flash, you know, of, of the different characters, because there was a lot of characters, right? Yeah, strong, and I know mad, strong, sad, strong, mad, homestyle runner, and and the what was the that his little pet called the 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 thing the itch the dip? Oh, the, the um, the oh crap! Yeah, now, now it was on the tip of my tongue. The yeah. the geef the geek the uh the cheat the cheat yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the cheat, cheat. the cheat get, get us some drinks <laughs> oh strong bad get us some drinks <laughs> I mean, strong, they all strong, they... strong bad no strong mad one of them wouldn't talk strong mad just go <laughs> that would that would be strong mad yep yeah, strong strong mad, the big strong, strong guy yeah, big, big, strong guy. And there was Coach yeah. Z. I mean, mo there was two guys basically did almost all the voices. It was awesome. Absolutely well, awesome. I love, yeah, again, yeah, I love yeah. when the internet was new, you know, when, when like, when you had to go, you only got high-speed internet at the office. Uh, it was, it, I mean, I lost, like, for example, I was a big early gamer, and I lost entire summers because my office was one of the first offices in the in the city with T1 connection and i would go there and play um diablo 2 the original because it was like i'm not going to do dial up for my freaking house if not if i can you know get t1 for free and i spent yeah. summers there like sun up till sun down I, on on the weekends and i remember real quick i remember the janitor who had a voice box i don't think he was from vietnam but anyway he come he you can imagine right squeaky wheel janitor rolls his cart by my door and he goes he goes Mark, you really got to get a life. <laughs> and then rolled by. You know, you know you're in bad shape when the voice box yeah. guy gives you that sort of life lesson. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, or, yeah, I remember you saying uh, quite a few times, as you did now, you, you could actually finish the internet back then. Yeah. But you know what? When I, when I left school, man, in 96, I was in year 10, then I started my apprenticeship. Um, we had, I'm from country, South Australia, from, from border town. Yeah. And um, we had one computer with dial-up internet, and that was it. Um, that was in our library, and you could get the oh. um, encyclopedia uh, or whatever that the website was called, uh, we, the, the search engine. Yeah, one, one computer when I left school had the oh. internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah man, so we were sporty. We grew, up, we grew up on farms and land and playing sports and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was it – was, I, I was lucky enough to where when I moved to Boulder, um, it was, I worked for tech companies. And so they were always, you know, cutting edge, whatever it was. And, and new stuff was coming out like every couple of months. It's like, oh, yeah, we're upgrading to this. We're upgrading to that. And then finally my neighborhood got, got high speed. It's like, oh, it's yeah. a freaking dream. So what so. year was that when high speed internet was uh, accessible for you? For, for me at home? Yeah, but well, at, oh, uh, oh, at Bulger at work. Yeah. Oh, not, no, not until about 2002, um, I believe. Okay, yep. Yeah, yeah, 2002, 2003. That's when it transitioned over. Up until then, you know, I had to hear the handshake like everybody else, you know, with my yeah, yeah. 33.6 motor and my 44.4. And everyone uh, knows, everyone, all, all us uh, 80s yeah. and 90s kids know that sound. Um, <clears throat> I remember you speaking quite a bit about uh, uh, you had, you bought a um, night vision goggles, yeah? Um, when, yeah. Uh, you know, let's let's look up, let's see what's going on. Um, yeah. By the way, I, I admire uh, Crow 777's telescope work. I mean, who would have thought back then, 2013, 14, when he was um, shooting the moon for almost five years straight? Who would have thought yeah. how important and significant that is back then, yet alone today? 
because yeah. people still go back and, and watch the Firmament Wave, you know. Absolutely right. incredible footage, incredible footage. But I remember you saying quite a few times that, yeah, you bought yourself some night vision goggles or a scope. So what have you seen? What stood out to you looking at the sky? Um, all this inspired me, by the way, to buy a P900 and do the same thing. So yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Um, again, the, what, what happened was there was a, a British guy on television or maybe it was um, an online video. I think it was television, though. And it was at towards the end of the interview, and he was in silhouette. And I was like, I was, you know, okay, it's a little sketchy. You know, we're going to do that silhouette altered voice thing but at the end he's going you want to see some weird stuff because get some night vision start looking up and i'm going well that sounds like a wager so i went and went on amazon and i i bought like like three or four different kinds i returned the ones i didn't like and finally got these ones from um, belarus because the russians make excellent night vision now okay. only recently only in the last two years is the americans finally in the civilian market, you can go on Amazon and buy decent night vision all day long for like 150 bucks. But um, I, I grab a pair of night vision binoculars and I, and I was like, all right, and I go out there, you know, wait, for, you know, boulder sky, beautiful, hot, you know, mountain sky, very, very clear. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting to look and, and it was kind of like the, the movie They Live where you, you, you look up there and, and the sky's just crawling with satellites, right? Hmm. At least I thought they were satellites. And the first night I was going, uh, it's like, wow, it, I had no idea. I mean, you, you, but you know, it's, it's fast li- or just, just, just uh, creeping away. Just, just, away. well, most of them were moving at a fairly, you know, fairly consistent rate. Like there was some sort of speed limit involved up there. Mm. And then I am going, okay. And by the second night, you know, I was like, eh, I'm getting kind of bored of this. It's like, how many satellites can I actually watch? And I remember thinking this as I'm watching one move from um, south to north. And it and it slows down and it stops. <laughs> I'm going, wow. What are you, wow, what are you cool. doing? What are you doing, little buddy? Right. And it was like he was lost. Right. And then all of a sudden, a, you know, quick burst of whatever, and he banks to the to the right and goes almost ballistic at a mo- an amazing rate of speed. I'm going, wow. Yeah. What the hell was that thing? And after a, and I'm going, wait a minute. I'm going what is all this other stuff up here what are these things are these actually satellites and the more you stare at them the more you realize that it's it's um the i don't even know if any of them are satellites for the most part i, I think they're just commuter traffic i mean mm-hmm. in fact a lot of them seem to be following uh, the highways our highways using them as road markers north south um going at a, at a fairly decent clip during the early evenings i would see something called driver's ed where you see these v formations where you know sometimes as little as four and sometimes as many as like 12 and they'd be they'd be banking and careening all over the place of course there's no sound and and also keep in mind they were at least twice as high as normal aircraft and i was between i was i boulder the denver airport was really really close it was only like 40 miles you know due um due east of me and so i knew what the incoming traffic of planes were incoming was coming from the north outbound was going from the south always right Mm -hmm. And I, and it's like, this was not them. I mean, it was very easy to tell. This was not airplanes and it was not birds and it was a perfectly clear sky. And you could do that. You could, and I, I went out there this way before flat earth. And um, I went out there every night for years watching this stuff. Didn't record anything because my, my night vision didn't have a record capability because apparently the, the, uh, the platform was different, but it was incredible. And I mm. mean, to where I was going, I was laying on my back like in a like in a soccer field in the snow, <laughs> like at you're three like, a.m. Just, just looking up, just checking just looking out. up, going. This is. I mean, because you never get tired of it. All you do is mm. see one, and then your adrenaline's up, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to be up for a couple more hours at least. Wow, that's and, cool. And yeah, and it's, it's super and, super and fun. And so only visible through the night vision goggles. So if you took that scope down, um, could you see lights at all? Or no, uh, no, with the exception no, no. of, and I think that's deliberate. I think for the most part. And people forget that when it comes and, and Steven Spielberg actually hinted at this in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which was really clever, cleverly done, where in the in the towards the end of the movie, a bunch of ships all of a sudden arranged themselves in the form of the Big Dipper and the whole Big Dipper moved as one across the, the across the sky, because when you're looking at them, they look about the same size as stars. Yeah. Yeah. And that's deliberate. I think they have to be at that altitude. And the, what I was getting at was, is that, look, if it, you have a spacecraft or, or aircraft or whatever it is, the, the, the big kicker here is don't forget that they're like cars. Cars work just fine when their lights are off. Get it? 
See, if mm. you don't, if, if you have a car and it's absolutely silent, mm. no one's going to see, and you turn your lights off, who's going to know if you went by? Yeah. Yeah. And airplanes always make sounds. Helicopters always make sounds. These things don't make any sound. They run on some unified field engine. And so they run absolutely silently. And why would you ever look up? All Brilliant. human tech though, right? All human tech. Nothing's coming in into this realm and nothing's leaving this place. Well, I, would go that. I, I, would, I wouldn't go that far. And now, uh, to be fair, do I think they're from Mars or Venus or, or Saturn? You've heard me probably say this before. No, I don't. Do, but do I think they're from older civilizations that predate our own? Yeah, sure. I mean, again, I, I've said this since minute one, which is we're not the first people to rent this apartment. Okay. Why would you? Why, why would you? It'd be a waste, right? Why wouldn't you? Every civilization. Look, our only our unbroken history only goes back about 5,000 years. But there's remnants and ruins of stuff that goes back way, way older than that. Way, way older. I mean, come on. Um, uh, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Machu Picchu, Puma Punku, um, just about every every place they ever visited on ancient aliens, way, way older. And so did they have advanced tech? Yes. But I think only one group is allowed to be on the surface at any given one time. Kind of like a... Um, yeah, kind of like like kind of like uh, in a in a class in high school. When you graduate, you graduate. You gotta go. You gotta leave. You can't be at school anymore. Seniors, you gotta go. Okay. We gotta bring in another class. Okay. <laughs> so. Unless you flunk and no one wants you around anyway, because people are laughing at you. <laughs> oh well, there's that. Sure. <laughs> hey, uh, crop circles, crop circles. What's your opinion? What's your experience? Have you uh, interviewed or spoken to anyone with any sort of knowledge that I might not know about? Because. Uh, I'm pretty interested to know how they're made, what they are, who made them. Uh, do I think they're real? Yeah, I do. Um, oh, they're the, real, hundred percent real. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The the despite how what, they how they're done, some sort of energy device, no question. I mean, you're bending the stalks without breaking them, um, and some of these formations are huge, ridiculously Absolutely huge. Massive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the biggest one I ever saw, the most beautiful I ever saw was, um, uh, Milk Hill and it covered about half a million square feet over, um, kind of a rolling terrain. It wasn't even perfectly flat to where one end of the train, you could not see the other end. It's like how it, and it was a series of interlocking circles and it was just absolutely beautiful. It's like, look, you could give me Photoshop in a week. I couldn't draw that, mm. let alone, uh, you know, go out there with whatever. But the brilliance of crop circles, and you know, you know when the 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 scapegoat is too obvious, which was back in the '90s. I remember when this happened. Was there was these drunk guys from England mm -hmm. that? So, and I remember it was a newspaper. Brothers. Hmm. Yeah, that offered these guys that offered anyone fifty thousand pounds if they could make a crop circle. Well, that's in the early nineties. That's a lot of money, right? In the nineties, that's, that's a hundred grand in American today. That's easily, it's like, what, what guys wouldn't do this? So they went out with ropes and a board made one of the worst crop circles I've ever seen in my life. And, and, and the media jumped on it deliberately. They said, oh, well, there you go. All the crop circles was obviously made by these guys. It's like, yeah. What? what are you talking about? The Milk Hill one alone. Not only is it hours away from these guys, but it would take a team of who knows how many people to, to get that done. And and but but again, that's what to this day. And I remember was a, was it a Linda Moulton Howe? She said it was one of the finest pieces of misinformation you've ever seen in your life. She goes, because once the, the, the because the general public wanted to believe in something like that. Which was like, oh, it was obviously he's drunk. To this day, I mean, seriously, to this day, I still have people say, oh, no, wasn't it those drunk British guys from that pub? It's like, they're still happening. I'm pretty sure those guys are dead now. So yeah. it, who's doing them now? Yeah. And there's this, yeah. not only that, but there was one. If you want to look at it, I'll send, I'll send some pictures to, uh, to you after the show. You and, and nobody talked about this. Forget about crop circles. Have you ever seen crop writing? No. Oh my God. It was, this wow. was in Russia and there was this field next to this highway and it was like somebody took a print, like printed, you know, like when you're, when you're doing a print job and it's like print four or five pages. And it was like, but these pages were like an acre per page. And it was like, you know, and was laying on top of each other in a language I've never even known even remotely seen in a, in, in a period overnight. Just so like by morning, all these cars were pulled off the road and, and people were taking pictures from elevated positions. It's like, what the hell is this? And it was in Russia. 
on top of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. no, no crop crop circles. I think they are not even gla- graffiti's too lowbrow. I think I think they're banners and insignias of former civilizations. I think it's allowed in the rules mm-hmm. of this place, the unwritten rule book, which we're not allowed to see. You know, kind of like um, what the same the same rule book that says you're not allowed to show up in the main street of you know show up in the middle of Paris with a golden spaceship and start you sure, know sure. T- taking taking selfies and signing autographs. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah, but at the yeah. same time. That same rule book says, oh, yeah, if you've got some boaters that are just off in the middle of nowhere, some hikers, or maybe a military people that are lost, oh, yeah, you can go after them all day long. Yeah. But but no, any group of people over a certain, which is why, the, again, the, the greatest UFO sighting in the history of anything, look it up, there's a wonderful wiki on it, it's called the 1561 Nuremberg event. Seen it. It's seen not wrong. Yep, you, yep, you've talked yeah. about it, and I looked it up. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, and, and again, that broke the rules. I don't know what happened to the coverage yeah. there. You, you've heard me say it. It's like what, what, what got me wasn't the fact that these huge armadas were fighting over Nuremberg, Germany on a beautiful spring day. No, yeah. it was it took an hour for that third faction to show up. An hour. Yeah. It's like, yeah. dude, I yeah. could point a gun out the window right here. I could fire a couple rounds off. There's going to be cops mm. here in 10 minutes. No doubt. But, no doubt. but these no guys doubt. were hammering on each other for an hour. Some These guys, whoever these two groups were, they found a blind spot spot and yeah. which leads in a whole nother thing it's like why is there a blind spot hmm. and and again that what one more thing really fast if you ever watched ancient aliens they covered this but you know what they left out they left out that third faction that showed up which was really because that third faction really cements the whole thing and and, and shows people it's like no there's a power structure here there's a hierarchy which oh, is yeah. which which is there yeah. are there are people I'm not saying they're cops or the UN. There, there's, there's something else going on here. But there are layers of of hierarchy way, way above us. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, it's good. Um, when you mentioned, um, yeah, they're not like it's not like they're just going to show up in in Paris and go boom, we're here. But uh, that reminded me of that uh, Nuremberg uh, footage, or uh, just a picture, wasn't it? It's just a drawing. Yeah, it was just a picture. I mean, again, the teacher, if, if yeah, you, yeah. D- again, they, there was no f- photography back in 1561, sure. but you had sketch artists all day long, and they in an hour you could draw, up, and they, it was a beautiful drawing. Absolutely, and it's yeah. still in their museums to this to this day, and it's gorgeous. And people say, oh, yeah, it's it sun is. dogs. And it's like sun dogs really on a perfect cloudless April morning in Germany. I go, it's in, and the thing was the, 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 the reason why that one of the reasons they got away with it was <clears throat> in 1561, there was no um, science fiction references. So the only thing that they could really attribute to is religious event. Okay. <laughs> it's like, well, it's gotta be a sign from God. And it's like, really? Cause it looks like flying aircraft carriers to me. looks like, I mean, like the old school Vimana stories of India from back in the day where you had those flying cities that beat each other to death and then finally took the Indian civilization back down to the stone age. Hmm. If you know those yeah. stories, which is yeah, pretty yeah, good. Look, look, at, look at the, look up. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. They're listening. Look up something called the Mahabharata, which is the Indians. They have absolutely, if you go to India, they got no problems with UFOs at all. It's like, Oh yeah, it's part of our lore. Yeah. We, well, because our civilizations used to be flying. Have you seen recently um, a video posted on Reels or TikTok uh, here in Thailand of, of what uh, other people are calling Nephilim on a, on a giant, on, on a hill, and um, that someone's doing a, uh, having a photo shoot with these uh, background of mountains, and then they're like, oh, whoa, and they sort of zoom into this mountain, and it looks like this giant figure sort of forms itself back down into the rock formation yeah you probably haven't seen that oh i haven't seen that yet last couple of weeks that was huge over here and um, oh cool i'm 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 gonna try and contact this guy because that if that's here i'm north i'm about an hour north of bangkok if that's drivable man i'm gonna send it i'm gonna head out you should start but why not i'm here hey yeah um but uh uh, Antarctica, are we any closer to getting one of us down there or, um, you know, uh, because yeah. at the moment, at the moment, Mark, I've got a friend working on the Australian base down there and uh, he's constantly sending me um, uh, via Snapchat uh, videos and f- um, photos of, of it's, dude, it's, it's a mining corporation down there. It's incredible sure. what they're doing. He says uh, to me that they're um, uh, drilling for um, carbon dating um, and things like that, bringing up samples and stuff. But, dude, I've worked, you know, years in mining in Australia. It, 
the scale of mining, you can't even watch a YouTube clip and understand the scale of mining. And that's just Australia alone, which is huge. But right. but down there, dude, it looks exactly the same. They've got the tractors, the loaders, the diggers, um, the, the whole trucks. It's just in snow, man. So the wheels are replaced with tracks and th- they're moving something down there. Um, and so I've asked him, I said, would you like to come on and can you live stream from down there? Um, he goes, uh, don't know if we can live stream, we can talk when, when I get back. And I, and I said, um, you know, what's the, do you know much about the history of, of Admiral uh, Bird discovering more land down there? He goes, right. yeah, we've all, we've all heard about and talked about the ice wall. And so he was actually heading inland, 1,200 kilometers inland. So when he gets back from that expedition, I want to find out more and more and more. Like, uh, Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, talk to him. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the 24-hour sun down there does exist, doesn't exist. Uh, I, I believe it exists. But, I mean, I know there's there's some of our, our people that, that think it doesn't exist. And there's been some weird video when it comes to that. But mm-hmm. I could go either way. The, the reason why it hasn't been on my top 10 list is because the average person doesn't know what that means anyway. If there's, yeah, you know, sure. the average person doesn't yeah. do 3D modeling in their, their head. But yeah, yeah. If, if there is 24 hours, something that just means there's a, a secondary light source that's happening down well, there. That's exactly what I think as well. If it is, <clears> it's <throat> reflecting off something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah that's awesome. Um, so um, I hate seeing division in the in the flat earth community. You know, uh, people right. releasing videos uh, calling other people um, – uh, shills or Freemasons or anything. Right. Why is the division? Is that just another distraction on you know keeping everyone from the the truth themselves? Like you know, like sort of grinds my. No, head. no, that is unfortunately just the nature of human beings. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that yeah. that's been around there since minute one, which is when it comes to media, when when you're when you're doing stuff where the the general public's responding to you in any fashion. Some people don't play well with others, period. Mm. Um, no, I mean, come on. Matt Boylan was a great example back in the day, you know, where, where he just he, – some people absolutely <clears throat> do not share the spotlight. Eric Dubay, great example of that, which you was – it's like it. it's my yeah. – the Eric, Eric's like, well, you know, it's not my way. It's nobody's way. You know, it's, it's – yeah. it, everybody else is condemned except for me. Yeah. Do I think there's actual shills in Flat Earth? No. You don't have to have actual shills and flat. Do I? Do I think there's? Do I think we're infiltrated? Sure, sure. I mean, if you're a government agency, you absolutely want to inf- infiltrate flat Earth. But do you have to have any of those people do content creation? No, hmm. you don't have to because the the there's so much division already. It's just hmm. it's just how it is. Be, it, yeah. Think about also this: when you open minds up with a with a flat Earth level, right? And when 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 flat Earth cracks a mind open, it becomes so open that you want to plant your flag anywhere and you want to hold on to that like grim death and mm-hmm. and people don't like and and who are we to judge it's like look look i can't shoot down any flat earth ideas for the most part it's like yeah there's some i don't like as much as other and gradually you know people tend to 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 uh gravitate towards towards different camps which is why i said in the documentary um it reminded me of that life of, of brian clip mm-hmm. so much where you know brian drops the shoe and it was just this innocent dropping of the shoe, and then people were looking at the meaning of it, and you saw religion forming based that's on the right. shoe, you know, that's the interpretations right, yeah. of the shoe. Yeah. And that's where that's where that has not changed for us. But luckily for us, though, at the end of the day, the the common enemy is still the globe. So that I mean, really, without that, <clears throat> no, no, we would have torn each other apart, absolutely mm-hmm. shredded each other. So like when we did the the conference, for example, there were people at the conference. That that I you know I haven't talked to in a while. Probably not going to talk to a, a, you know for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but but at the same time, we're all you know same team. So yes, there 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 is fighting behind the scenes, but it's not it's not the fighting with terminal intent, if, if mm-hmm. for lack of a better term. You know, I, I try to tell people it's like, do you are you worried? It's like no, I'd rather have a um, an army that was you know you know taking taking shots at each other inside the camp than sleeping. Right, you you want you want an army that's not bored. If that's if that's all you're worried about, that's it, mm. yeah. If they're if they're getting into you know scrapping in the yard, yeah, as long as nobody's dying, yeah, let them let them scrap. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. it's better because yeah. when they're when they're it's scrapping, practice, man. yeah, their mind is really really moving. And we've been looking, and it, it really helps us be in some ways because we look for targets. You know, we have a hard time finding decent. Our our weakness right now in flat Earth is we don't have enough decent opponents. 
we don't have a decent celebrity opponent to save our life. Um, you know, Neil Tyson made some comments back in the day. Joe Rogan made some comments back in the day. Um, and the trolls that we have, oh, they're just not good. They're subpar. You know, I mean, the fact that that Austin, you know, Witsit can just unload on anyone. Any, he sleepwalks through, through a lot of those debates. I mean, I see the, the grin on his face. And it's not just he's because he's cocky. It's because it's like, oh, this is, I, I can do this all day. Right. You know, I, I think he did. A, I, what, I remember watching him. He was doing like one on 10 where he had like 10 guys in a in a split screen. Right. And mm. and it's like, come on, man. what do you got? And he was just knocking them down, knocking them down. And it's like, yeah. And he's not the only one. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything that um, in the conspiracy conspiratorial circle that gets you stumped? It's like, well, OK, this one's going to take some research. Is there anything that uh, pulls you up and. And, you know, really gets your attention and makes you want to, you know, uh, chase it. Uh, no, actually, since, since flat, I mean, nothing, nothing that I could do anything about. I mean, Mm. there's, I mean, of course I, you know, I'd love to, you know, the obvious silly stuff, you know, I'd love to take a tour around area 51. I'd love to, Mm. to, you know, see the nightmare hall of the, of the Dulce, New Mexico base. If, if that even exists, um, I, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to do a lot of things, but is, is there any conspiracy that, that no, because I, I had done so many by the time I got to flat earth. And then once you get to flat earth, everybody else, everything else just kind of loses its luster. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yeah. I'll talk about, let's just say nine 11, right. Mm. Every once in a while with somebody, but there's only so far I can go with it because in the end, we're only talking about a few buildings in one city in one country. Mm. Right. Compared to flat earth, which is everything. Mm. And, you know, it's, and so like when, when nine 11 people got mad at me, you know, when they were saying, you're, you're taking away from the greatest, from the greatest, you know, lie that there ever was. I was going, really? Is it compared? I mean, how can you, how can you hold a candle? In fact, the only thing bigger than flat earth would be um, the meaning of life and the identity of God. <laughs> yeah. Really? Because yeah. it's, because it's directly related. Everything else is literally under the umbrella that's in there. So no, I mean, the, I mean, I'd love to, I'd love for somebody to find a Bigfoot, for example, or a Yeti, okay. or a, yeah. Yeah. an abominable yeah. snowman. Yeah. And and bounties have been put out there for a number of years. And yeah. as much as the you know the the critics would like to come out and say, well, you know, they've never caught one, and they, they should have accidentally caught one after all these years. It's like, well, some animals carry off their dead, and don't forget the Billy Ape. You know the the six foot call, tall chimpanzee, which was just found, what not even ten years ago, that stayed right. hidden from from humanity forever, and they only found one because one was dead, and they, they got drug into a, like a village, you know, of of local tribesmen, and it's like, hey, look at this. By the way, it's a chimp that's six feet long, yeah. and and the reason was is because the chimps were smart enough that they stayed away from people, they avoided people, and. There's lots of species yeah. that do that. I've also heard that they they they're on a different frequency or different resonance. So you know they it's difficult for these beings not to be captured on on camera. Do, what do you think right. about that? Because have, oh, have you dude, to yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right. There's um there's I because I come from the video game world. There's something out there called if you play games, they're called treasure goblins. <laughs> Which is I'm into, tre- I'm into Call of Duty on mobile right now. <laughs> Draws my, yeah, tre- my treasure my goblins show up, and they're really tough to catch if you can even see them, right? Okay. And it's okay. like, yeah. and and so there was this story of a rancher on horseback that it was near a tree line, and the big a Bigfoot showed up, and he and it's, a, it's like a cagey, you know, rancher, and he had a lever action carbine with a scope on it, and it was like. He goes, I had him. I had him at point blank range from my horse. No way. That target was way too big. By the time yeah. I fired the shot, Go he on. was, yeah. he has blinked out. And it's like, yeah, okay. treasure yeah. goblin. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, there are some things I, I think the God has a sense of humor when it comes to things. He leads bread comes around, but he also puts yep. mysteries. It's like, yeah, there's some mysteries you're never going to catch. Because come on, I mean, now does that mean? And I think the military's probably tried. You know, the military, 
forget about the X-Files. I think the military, I'm sure, once had a program. It's like catch mm. Bigfoot, right? You know, Yeti, Yeti Snatch or whatever you want to call it. And mm. to where they use their high-end stuff, you know, helicopters with, with thermal imaging, you know, yeah. you know, buzzing around. It's like there's no way he's getting away. And yeah. when they open and, when they open up yeah. on him, mm. he's not there anymore. Yeah. And I'm there's not, only so yeah. many times times you can do that and then it's just classified as well things that we're just never going to get yeah so. that's right have, have you uh heard of the confessionals podcast with tony merkel he talks about this stuff all the time i have not but oh, i can't okay. listen to everything so. yeah yeah true i know you're flat out busy um uh so uh macro aggressions do you i forget his name uh, charlie robinson um, he comes under the, the banner, the, the banner of Merkel Media. Well, this guy, uh, Tony Merkel, dude, he he chases these skinwalkers and grey people and uh, wolf men, and he and he actually has done a couple of documentaries where he's gone and uh, stayed out where they've had these experience of this guy uh, uh, goes out hunting with his hunting dogs and. His dogs are literally picked up and thrown across and broken branches of trees and come back days later and, and they're on the search for these things. But again, that comes back to can these things actually be photographed um, or are they resonating on a different frequency that I just can't seem to... I don't I don't know. I don't think they can because remember, it's been a lot... I mean, the, the, over here, the, the Bigfoot heyday was back in the 70s and early 80s mm. and mm. we yeah. hunters have tried... Lord, they have tried. And you got to remember, I'm I'm in Bigfoot territory. And in fact, I lived the, the the highest concentration of Bigfoot is just north of here on in Canada. There's a place called Vancouver Island, which is a very big, very forested, mountainy area. And there's tons and tons of sightings up there, but not a lot of people live there, with the exception mm-hmm. of Victoria, which is on the coast. So I don't know. I I don't know. I I just think it's one of those things where it's never meant to be found. It's meant to be. Well, you know, signs yeah. and wonders, one of those mysterious things that keeps sure. people a fun, a fun distraction that people can talk about. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, Karen's Karen's pretty, uh, pretty passionate about Bigfoot. Yeah, I, I hear her talk about. Oh it yeah, a bit on your show. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. It's great. Yep. Yeah, yep. Um, how did you come across uh, Zulu One, and who who are the other regulars, like the Peanut Gallery? You know, like uh, how did you you know form this little circle? <sighs> It just like anything, it just kind of happens when yeah. when a show kicks off, people want to, you know, people will offer them, you know, they'll say, hey, can 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 I do this? You know, and, and you kind of it's not like we do auditions or anything, but you kind of give them a you see what see if they like it. You know, you let them come on and, and do stuff. So Zulu, he was one of the the early callers from back in 2015. Um, don't know exactly why he listened to TFR TFR, of course. Uh, con- contacted me immediately after hearing an interview I did with Rob Skiba. And I, I mean, contacted me like within seconds after the show ended. Yeah. It's like, how would you like to do a, a do a show on our network? It's like, I've never done a show before. And then, and they were like really insistent. It's like, we'll, we'll set you up. Here's, a, here's your time slot. What do you want to call it? I mean, they, like they're asking me this on the spot. I was like, hmm. uh, and I just came up with strange world. But yeah. as far as the Zulu, um, when you're a caller on a show, if it resonates and people give you shout outs, other callers give you shout outs, that reinforces you to call in more. Mm. So he started calling in more and um, and then he, then it moved out towards the later part of the show. So he's almost always the, the last guy on the show. Although tomorrow night he'll probably be the first guy because he says he's been doing this so long. It's like, can I be the first caller of the year? It's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, peanut, gallery, peanut Gallery reached out to me, um, military guy. Mm-hmm. And kind of it was weird he just kind of slipped into this producer role where he just yeah. kind of behind the scenes he didn't want to didn't want to be on camera or anything like that and he and he just wanted to make sure everything went smoothly and he's like okay sure and if Did he's working in he's the same my, studio or is he is he on no no he's a different stuff? different different part of the country um okay, if he is yeah. my unofficial handler then great um whoever picked yeah. him Picked a good one. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um, you did well. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, seriously, I get accused of that so much anyway. Why not? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then everybody else, you know, like Jan from Dallas, she calls in on a regular basis. I mean, every every podcast, once you once you get a certain call board going, and it, longevity really, really helps. Once mm-hmm. they know you're going to keep going, mm-hmm. they they want to be part of it. So yeah. it's does, it's like does, anything. It, does Dottie they, still call in or not? Because she was a bit of a crack up. No, but. Dottie, well, it's kind of 
Dottie was kind of looking for a relationship through flatter, <laughs> which is which is which isn't bad, and she's not alone. There are a lot of women out there that are looking mm. for again. Flat Earth is so unique in that conspiracies are usually ninety percent men, but Flat Earth, from what I can tell, the the conference was sixty percent men, maybe. Mm. And I mean that's a that's a big swing and and so when I when I, I I don't even have to ask him anymore but you know when I used to ask it's like why are you here, and 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 most women are like because it it's it's an flat Earth is a happy thing it's a positive thing it's upbeat there's a message of hope in inside it, you know it's not this dark and sinister thing where the government should be overthrown and, and stuff like that mm. where everybody talks like Batman. <laughs> and it, it, <laughs> have you seen Pete Holmes? Have you seen Batman? Have you seen his uh? Have you seen uh, in firing, firing the Joker, firing Aquaman? Have you seen that guy who, who mocks Batman the way he talked? Hey, <laughs> Aquaman. Have you seen? Have you seen him? No. Oh, I'm gonna send you a couple of clips. Yes, yeah, send it to me. Oh, dude, he's he's a comedian, Peter Holmes. He's been doing it for years, but he really mocks the Batman voice. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I mean, Chris. At that, by the way, that's Christian Bale's fault. Which yeah, is, yeah. Uh, you know, Michael Keaton kind of talked like Michael Keaton and Val Kilmer mm -hmm. talked like Val Kilmer and, and George Clooney. But when Christian Bale, you know, method actor kicks yeah. in, it's like, well, and, and it makes sense because you really want to disguise your voice if you're going to be yeah. Batman. You don't want to sound like sure, somebody yeah. that that's, that's, that's going to be around town and in the news. Dude. So anyway, the, but gonna, yeah, everybody. Lose it if, uh, I'll have to send you this clip. Yeah, yeah, send it to me. Mm. Uh, um, I, I will remember. I will remember. But I'll pop up my my thing because I I want to make sure that you get the um, uh, uh, those crop that crop writing. Yeah, yeah. That's anyway, great, the crop. The, yeah. Mm. Yeah, the crop writing. But but yeah, the the Strange World crew just kind of formed like like anything else. And again, when you yeah, do something right. for for eight years. Um, yeah. Uh, it'll be nine years, I think, in April for for Strange World. I mean, come on, we're on tomorrow night is episode four hundred and forty, and that's a weekly know, show. Yeah. Way four forty, yeah, um, four hundred forty, four hundred forty weeks. I remember you were on a live stream with Jaron, Rose, and Dave when uh, SpaceX was, was doing the launch, and by the end of it, you guys just could not break it apart anymore. It's like come on if people haven't woken up watching this then you're never going to wake up you know do, yeah. do you remember that stream you were on the yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah you know it, it's funny you mentioned that by the way because there are there's there's a saying that i that i throw out there every once in a while which is conformity builds empires and it the reason why they roll out these programs is because they they've already run the numbers they've done the modeling and they know it's going to work for a lot of people Sort of like with the pandemic. I mean, the United States is like, look, 71, 72% of the people in the United States fell for it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the space program, it's 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 easy enough to do because you've got the the added bonus in the United States that people want to believe in it. It's not, it's not that they just blindly believe in it. They also are invested. It's like, I want to believe that space is this under, wonderful place, you know, where Star Trek happens and Star Wars and Stargate yeah. and Battlestar Galactica and everything else with freaking mm -hmm. star in the title. Um, yeah. They they want it, and so um, tr try to convince them otherwise. It takes it takes some doing. Or or mm -hmm. again, the line yeah. you probably heard me use, where um, Dana Perino from Fox News, she said it best. She when she was you know when she was asking her opinion on the moon missions, she goes, "I believe in the moon missions because I'm a mm -hmm. patriot," okay. and yeah. that line was very well put. In that she was saying, "If you know what's good for you, you mm -hmm. do. You believe what the government tells you." Now, granted, she was a press secretary for the Bushes, so she knows better than anybody that that particular message. But yeah, that that was that was basically it. The yeah. the people in America, but it still bothers me to no end because I ask people outside of this country. I say, you know, people in Europe, you people from Sweden. I go, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? And it doesn't matter if they're from Sweden. Everybody answers the same way. It's like, well, because it was on your television. And your news would never lie about something like that. <laughs> you, Which you don't know wife though. said uh, that Americans will believe anything they see on television. Was that Nixon or Nixon's wife? Or um... I can't remember, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. They they do the mm -hmm. up because up until now, up until very recently, um, mm -hmm. you if it was on, why would the there's mistakes that are made in movies and television, you know, entertainment all day long, right? You, there's dedicated websites. You know, if, if a coffee cup literally moves from one side of the room to the other without a good transition, yeah, they're going to call it I, out, right? 
I'm annoying to watch movies with because I'm always like, see that? <laughs> yeah. 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 People, and, and the reason, the reason why it even happens is because to save money, mm. um, production studios shoot out of sequence. So it's like, okay, we've got to shoot all the kitchen scenes today, right? So we're going to order this week. The problem is they have to go back for reshoots. Well, that time the kitchen's already been torn down. So you have to put the kitchen all the way back together. and nope. Even like you said, to the kettle and the the coffee cup. Or or I'll give you another one really quick, which is um, one of the most famous ones, which is the original Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. In the first Mm -hmm. theatrical version, and you can find it out there, when the hobbits are leaving the Shire, there was a road in the upper right hand corner with a white car going through it. Oh. And and it actually made it to the theaters. And you're thinking, mm-hmm. and 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 the reason why was because you're thinking, well, it went past all the editors, all the sound editing. All I mean, that particular scene was probably watched by thousands of people before yeah. it got to the theater. Why did they sure. miss it? Well, yeah. because they were focused yeah. on the hobbits. It, there's there's your misdirection for you. Yeah, you're looking at the yeah. hobbits. You're not looking at what's happening in the corner. Oh, by the way, there's a car driving through. In 19, mm. When they shot it, it would have been um, about 2,000 back mm. then. I was like, oh, my yeah. God. So, same, yeah. but, same but, what, what, Bra- Braveheart. Apparently, there's a Volkswagen Beetle in one of the, the fighting scenes in the background huh? on Braveheart. And and one of those uh, war movies, someone's wearing a wristwatch. <laughs> things like there that. There you go. Yeah. It happens yeah. happens all the time, but in yeah. fact, you go to moviemistakes.com and, and they've got lo- tons and tons and tons of them. But oh, the, what about um, episode four in Star Wars where the stormtrooper walks through the door and the, and the, uh, the archway is too low and he goes, thunk. <laughs> Do you see that? Oh, one? sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, the, um, but, but it never should happen in the news because the news is real nah, time yeah. mm-hmm. and the news, wh- why wh- there wouldn't be a script tied to the news ever. It's just, it happens as it happens and news mm-hmm. footage shouldn't, that you should not find mistakes in news footage. And that's where the internet really changed because people, mm-hmm. those bored nerds start going through. It's like, wait a minute, mm. that's not right. And then the, again, the, one of the easiest things to do was space footage. Because there were so many mistakes in space footage, so oh, which is why even the, the, now it's a disaster. Mm. It's still it's still terrible, but it helped yeah. us because it gave us a base a baseline. Because there were people criticizing criticizing the moon missions for years before flat Earth came along. I mean, in mm. fact, right after the seventy two, the last moon mission nineteen seventy two happened, there were nerds that were jumping all over crap, but there was no internet. So the only way they could even show anybody was with still shots. And they go to the UFO conventions, which wasn't the most credible place to go anyway. Right. Yeah, and so these yeah. guys, we say up this booth, it's like, look, the moon mission was fake. Or, oh, look, this, you know, there was obviously something weird and sinister happening on the moon. Didn't occur to them that there was no moon to go to. You know, that yeah, the whole thing yeah. was a freaking soundstage, which is why I yeah. loved the, um, the Rammstein video, um, We're Living in America. Um, mm-hmm. we, we are living in America? Living in America? No, we're all living in America. Um, with a K, America with a K, mm-hmm. and they when they when they shot the video for that, they put they they did a went to an old burned out factory, visqueened all the, the all the windows to make it perfectly black, brought in perfect four inches of ash, and then hi- hired the company that made the exterior of the actual NASA suits, the cloth exterior. It was color palette perfect absolutely flawless to the to the NASA version. And that was a nod to like, oh yeah, you want to know how easy to fake it is? This is how easy it is to fake it. Yeah. We did yeah. it for yeah. a million bucks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Crazy. Um, Mark, I'll let you go. We've been going for about an hour and a half now, man. I, I just want to thank okay. you for your time so much. Um, um, is there... Uh, anything can you just let uh, everyone know once again where they can find you where's the best place to see you on a weekly basis um where they can find the clues uh, all the rest easiest easiest place to find me honestly is um just go into any search engine whatever you want google firefox mozilla uh youtube R- rumble bit you right and just type in flat earth mark kind of like flat earth dave you know because i don't know if he stole that from me or i stole that from him either way but he was, it was smart because it goes, it gets past the algorithms. You yeah. type in, if you just don't just type in flat earth, you type in flat earth, it's going to send you into mainstream stuff and debunking stuff. And uh, just type in either flat earth Dave or flat earth Mark. Um, you'll find me. And if you've never checked it out, seriously, check out the app. Um, you go, go to flat earth oh, Dave or. No, I can back that up. That's it's brilliant. Yeah. 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 It's a great, it's a great app. I shouldn't have waited. I waited like a year before I got it. And it's it's a fantastic app, and it's really really helped us. Um, but that yeah, is it's the, the sun 
uh, Moon. Saturn, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. That's it. Yeah, it's brilliant. I'll yeah, it's a long honestly. title. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. 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 It is a long but title. It, he regrets it, doesn't he? <laughs> but but my parting shot for anyone that's listening to this is because you're probably thinking, my God, the man is absolutely mental. It's like, look, don't take my word for it. I'm not here to convince you, to persuade you. I'm just here to put the idea in your head and let you deal with it the way, the way you see fit. Um, don't take anything I say as absolute gospel. Um, the, in the end, do your own research and ask questions. Um, we have a 99% retention rate. That's higher than organized religion. Why? Because I wasn't the one that broke down the globe for you. In the end, it'll be you. And if you broke down the globe, how can you put it back together again? You can't. Like I don't, I I know of one guy, and we still don't know where the hell he went. That that ever one content creator that absolutely, you know, said, "Oh no," and that's because he was trying to build a, his own flat Earth map using some distance calculator between cities, and he was he was going insane trying to make the the everything line up, and he finally just snapped and lost it. I don't know what happened to him. He's British. Hmm. Anyway, do you, do you remember his yeah. name? Uh yeah. The the channel was called um, Tiger Dan. Tiger Dan 925, which I believe stands for Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. Okay. No one actually knew his name, which was weird. Mm. Patricia in interviewed him once. It was weird. Yeah. He had the worst lighting ever. It looked like he was in a gulag somewhere. He was absolutely just dark. Like like he had like a 20-watt bulb somewhere. It's like, oh, my God, it was haunting. Absolutely Do you know what the terrible. worst lighting ever? No, not really. But it's a really bad example of a bloke who doesn't know how to light his own studio was um, – Karen's recent debate on debateism on journalism with that guy. Oh my god, that Excellent. was horrible. Done and that was horrible, wasn't it? It was so. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was. It was yeah. great to watch Karen lose it. You know, because she's not exactly, <laughs> she's not Miss Composure when somebody starts yeah. screaming at her. Um, yeah. But it was great because he had a window next to him, which was really his only secondary light, and it started getting dark. And so the colored lights behind him, which looked like a UFO, it just looked like the UFO was getting closer and closer to his head. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, he, yeah, oh my god, yeah, don't get me started no, on no. that anyway. So, but thank you for having me on. It was, it was, no, thank pleasure. you, Mark. It's been absolutely awesome, mate. And I look forward to chatting with you again soon and uh, you know, uh, steering more people towards your channel, man. It's been great. Thanks very much. Thank you.